As per the orders of the Maharaja, the two adopted princesses were groomed by none other than Kerala Kalidasa Kerala Varma Valiya Kovil Tamburan. Under his instruction, they were exposed to music, literature, fine arts, and obtained great knowledge in all these spheres. The Pallikkattu of the senior princess was held on the 6th of May 1906 and of the junior princess on the 25th of April 1907 as per custom and tradition. On 22nd Tulam 1088, the junior princess delivered a male child in the asterism of Chittira, who later came to be known as Sri Chittira Tirunal Baladama Varma, the ever-revered last ruler of Travancore. The ecstasy of Sri Mulam Tirunal knew no bounds. The Lord blessed the kingdom with an heir apparent. Soon after the birth of Sri Chittira Tirunal, the junior princess gave birth to a princess, Kartika Tirunal, and later to a prince, Uttradam Tirunal. Though a little late, the senior princess Rani Setu Lakshmi Bhai also gave birth to a female child, Uttram Tirunal. Presuming that the dynasty which had its origin in Krita Yuga would last forever and the family is blessed with heirs, Sri Mulam Tirunal died peacefully. At the time of the demise of Sri Mulam Tirunal, the heir apparent, Chittira Tirunal Balarama Varma, was only 12 years of age. Hence, Attingal senior princess Rani Setu Lakshmi Bhai took over the royal administration as regent. She ruled the country remarkably for a period of seven years. M. E. Watts was a divan then. A number of reforms were introduced within this short span of time. It was during her reign that the Alapura Chertala, Kolla Malapura, Neriya Mangalam, Pallivasal and Nindakara bridges were constructed. She attached great importance to public health. The Health Education and Public Health Department was started by her. A Boy Scout Association was formed and the powerhouse and the Wellington Waterworks were established. One of the main achievements during the reign of the regent was the abolition of the Devadasi system. The prominent progressive leaders who lived during this period were Sri Ayya Swami, Sri Chattambi Swami, Sri Narayana Guru and Sri Ayyankali. Brahma Sri Taikad Ayya Swami was a saintly personage who influenced the spiritual zeitgeist of Travancore. The contribution of Sri Parama Bhattaraka Chattambi Swami as a social reformer is stupendous. He worked for the upliftment of women and exhorted them to be part of the mainstream of society. Raising the slogan, one caste, one religion and one God, Sri Narayana Guru fought against untouchability and caste system which prevailed in Hinduism. Ayyangali, who tried to liberate the repressed group of people, first fought for freedom to travel. During the early years of the Regency, the historical Vaikam Satyagraha took place and received national attention. Gandhiji visited Vaikam and addressed the agitators. During this trip, he visited the Kaudiyar Palace and met the Maharanis. Gandhiji asked their highnesses, will you allow temple entry to Harijans? The Maharani looked at the 12-year-old heir apparent Chitra Tirunal meaningfully. Yes, he is reported to have said emphatically. The investiture of Sri Chitra Tirunal took place on the 6th of November 1931. Bangalore 
പരിശീലനവും അറിവും സാധ്യതയും ഉണ്ടെന്ന് കണ്ടുപിടിച്ചിട്ട് നവംബർ മാസം ആയിരത്തി തൊള്ളായിരത്തി മുപ്പത്തി ഒന്നിൽ ഗഡ്വാർ ഹാളിൽ വെച്ച് അത് നടത്തി സെപ്റ്റംബർ അന്ന് മുതൽ രാജ്യഭാരം കൈയേറ്റെടുത്തു Mahatma Gandhi hailed Amma Maharani as the vital force of Travancore. My grandmother, the late Maharani Sayadu Barwari Bhai, was a very strong figure from the true matriarchal sense. But at the same time, she also had a much softer side to her, which perhaps many people were not aware of. She was a stateswoman and a diplomat with broad vision. A great connoisseur of art, she was a driving force behind every progressive measure introduced during the reign of His Highness Chittura Tirunal. The promulgation of Temple Entry Proclamation, establishment of Travancore University, Pallivasal Hydroelectric Project, Swadhi Tirunal Music Academy, Shri Chitralayam all owe their inception to her. A great vainika and patron of the arts, it was Amma Maharani who revived Swadhi compositions. or the great works would have been lost forever in 1933 contrary to the existing custom tradition and belief she traveled across the sea with her children and visited several european countries including the vatican she presided over the all india women's conference held in 1933 the banaras university honored her with the dilit The history and development of sports and games in Kerala are dedicated to the services of the multifaceted personality G V Raja. Colonel Godavarma Raja married the princess of Travancore, Kartika Tiruna Lakshmi Bai Thamburati in 1934. This was a turning point in his life. Travancore University was established in 1937 and GV Raja took charge as the president of the Department of Physical Education. Tennis was GV Raja's favorite sport. In cooperation with his friend Dr. KG Menon, he started the Trivandrum Tennis Club. He took the initiative to make Kovalam an international tourist spot. He also established a mountaineering institute at Nayar Dam. In 1971 after a visit to Patiala he died in a plane crash at Kullu From January 1886 the water in the Periyar dam could be used by Tamil Nadu only for irrigation even then the 1934-40 Madras government inquired whether the water can be used for production of electricity But Travancore stated that the water was granted for irrigation alone. If it was to be used for other purposes, Travancore should be given a special grant. The matter was left for arbitration. Alladi Krishna Swami argued the case for Tamil Nadu and Sir C P for Travancore. Travancore won the case, and that is the beginning of a dispute on water between the two states, which is live even today. It was during the reign of Maharaja Chitra Tirunal that Sir C P Ramaswamy Iyer who is considered one of the most efficient ministers of the world was appointed as diwan. A greatly misunderstood personality in history Sir C P with the permission of Maharaja tried his best to develop Travancore as a self-sufficient country in all aspects. later he was depicted as an autocrat hated by travancoreans because he put forth the demand for an independent travancore in 1933 the maharaja made administrative reforms by establishing a bicameral system of administration namely shri moolam assembly and shri chitra state council there were 72 members in the assembly and 37 members in the council In 1937 the meeting of the assembly and council was shifted to the legislative assembly in the secretariat when the VJT hall could no longer house the members of the two houses Shri Chitra Tirunal's most important famous progressive and unique contribution to history was the temple entry proclamation in 1936 
the proclamation by His Highness Sri Padmanabha Dasa Vanchipala Sri Ramavarma Kulashekara Kiridapati Manne Sultan Maharaja Ramavarma Raja Bahadur Shamshir Jang, Knight Grand Commander of the Most Eminent Order of the Indian Empire, Maharaja of Travancore, issued under date the 27th Tulam 1112, corresponding to the 12th of November 1936. Profoundly convinced of the truth and validity of our religion, believing that it is based on divine guidance and an all-comprehending toleration, knowing that in its practice it has, throughout the centuries, adapted its... The temple entry proclamation, which became the reformation of entire Hinduism, spread the fame of Sri Chitra Tirunal far and wide. It should not be forgotten that when apartheid and similar prejudices dominated in the British Empire and elsewhere in the world, leading to bloodshed and related violence, in the southern end of India, a king who was only 25 years of age, without shedding a drop of blood, ensured social equality against an evil practice and custom which existed for centuries through an ordinance. In 1937, the architectural marvel of Padmanabhapuram Palace was brought to the notice of the world. It was declared the first protected monument of the state. The following five years saw rapid industrialization in Travancore. With the launch of the Pallivasal hydroelectric project, industrialization commenced in Travancore. Sri Chittara Bleaching and Finishing Mills Alua, Aluminum Production Company Alupuram, Glass Factory Alua, Fertilizers and Chemicals Alua, Ceramic Factory Kundra, Punalur Paper Mills Punalur, Rubber Factory Thiruvanandapuram, Sugar Factory Takkalai, Plywood Factory Takkalai, Cashew Nut Koi Production Centers in Kollam were all established there. The Trade Union Act and the Factory Act were passed and the Labour Department was established. In 1942, the Travancore Broadcasting Station came into being. For the first time in India, Travancore banned capital punishment in 1944. It was in this year itself that the son of Kartika Tirunal and the heir apparent, Avitam Tirunal Ramavarma, passed away at the age of six. The consequences of the Second World War were felt in Travancore too. Great scarcity was felt for food items and steps were taken for cultivating bajra. The Vanji Poor Fund and the Chitra Poor Home were established in 1935 for the destitutes and orphans of Travancore. From the 26th of November 1941, free midday meals were provided to poor students. Likewise, clothes and study material were distributed free to the students, irrespective of their caste and creed. On Saturday, the 20th of March 1948, the first Constitution Framing Committee was formed. The next day, Sri A.G. John was elected the President of the Committee. On the 24th of March, Sri Chitra Tirunal issued an ordinance converting the Committee into a legislature. Accordingly, the first cabinet with Pattam Thanu Pillai as the Prime Minister came into power. On the 22nd of October 1948, Paravur T.K. Narayana Pillai became the Prime Minister. Red Portal, Swadandra Dinatil, Padija Verla, Nehru, Namade, Swadandra Badago, Yertia Pol. Paratil, Elaidatum, Madavalia, Ade, Genevigarum, Ade, Madritane, Trivizangurle, Genangal Rosaria Tinavutum, Alavelli and Nuladini, or there is some shape of Villa. He Raja Parana and the Varayan, the British, and the President, he would have Parana and Nola, Nalida, and Alil Kanda. Other Anganaganum Bodum, Raja Kenma, or La Protega Maya, or Kura, Melanel Kuim Shedirino. Raja, Prozinsan and Jay in the British Fernatil, the right turn of Savaranjas and Nola Vectaman. Jazi Vitias, Avasana Pikin of the Ne, Raja, Raja Paranam, Minka Yudu and Nola, while you were somehow in the Mulakana. In 1952, when the princely state merged with the Indian Union, Tirukochi was recognized as a B state.
The integration of Travancore Kochi was completed on the 1st of July 1949. Travancore, Kochi and Malabar merged to form Kerala on the 1st of November 1956. Sri Chitra Tirunal, who was crowned on the 6th of November 1931, was known as Raja Pramukh with the integration of Travancore Kuchi. Even after quitting the status of Raja Pramukha, Chitra Tirunal led the rest of his life as Padmanabha Dasa. Sans Pa, people revered him, respected him, loved him. Sri Chitra Tirunal continued his life as a simple, honest, noble citizen and at the same time maintained his commitment as a vassal to the tutelary deity Sri Padmanabha. With the demise of His Highness Chitra Tirunal Maharaja of the Travancore Royal Family, his younger brother, His Highness Uttradam Tirunal Marthandavarma, became the head of the Travancore Royal Family. Leading a pious life after dedicating everything to Lord Padmanabha and declaring himself to be Padmanabha Dasa, or servant of the Lord, continues to be part of our history. And thus, the dynasty which came into existence in the Treta Yuga which continued as Travancore during the reign of Marthandavarma, and which witnessed the golden age of the multifaceted musical emperor Maharaja Swati Tirunal, now has become part of history. History will record the life and times of the last king of Travancore, Maharaja Chitra Tirunal Balarama Varma, as a chapter of its modernization and industrialization. Whatever had been taken up during the reign of this king, his younger brother, the Ilay Raja Sri Uttradandirinal Marthanda Varma, completed with the zeal of a king whose sole mission was the welfare of his people. The poignancy of this achievement assumes further significance because Sri Uttradandirinal Marthanda Varma was only the titular head and not the enthroned king. However, even when deprived of the stamp of authority of a king, he declared himself wedded to the modernization of Travancore. And the people, especially those of Thiruvananthapuram, have looked upon this figurehead not as one distanced from them, but as one who has always been with them. It's only natural that this nonagenarian still leads a busy social life and his presence has become imperative for any august function. Suffice it to say that Sri Uttradandirinal Marthanda Varma has become Travancore's first de facto Tamburan. Amiability, accessibility and scholarship attract many to this versatile personality. His services to Travancore as the younger brother, that is as a colonel in the army and the bodyguard in the rank of honorary colonel of the king and later as the devoted brother of the former king and then after the sad demise of the elder as the titular head of Travancore, Sri Uttaranandirinal Marthanda Varma has a long list of achievements to his credit. But instead of lounging on the laurels of this, this people's king chose to tear off a conspectus he himself had prepared. In the true tradition of the royalty of Travancore, Sri Uttaranandirinal Marthanda Varma remains the vassal of Lord Sri Padmanapha. He says that this tradition of submission of the mighty to the almighty might start someone who is alien to our culture. But to one who is conversant with its richness and loftiness, this unique declaration of subservience is truly in conformity with its spirit. 
reminiscing at times on the good times he had as the younger brother of the illustrious ruler of Travancore and lamenting at times on the bad times we have slipped into because of ill will dishonesty and corruption sri uttaran dirnal martanda varma spends his time now in the sprawling patam palace still actively engaged in social activities meeting people who come to seek his blessings and patronage and offering succor to the truly deserving his autumnal felicity endears him to everyone when controversies came rushing in like the one on the priceless riches vaulted in his family temple of shri padmanabha this tamburan remained unfazed when the media inquired about its source and nature he founded his answers on devotion to the lord and travancore's tradition of benevolence and diplomacy loot and plunder had never been in the administrative agenda of travancore's royalty it had not lacked in astuteness and sagacity either and today like the official bodyguard he was to the elder brother the king of travancore sri uttarandrinal martandavarma he is ready to don the armor for the lord while serving as his dasa the edict that later came to be known as the temple entry proclamation act of 1936 has a whole series of key expressions like divine guidance all comprehending toleration the consolation and solace of faith and needs of the changing times these are all pointers to the mindset of a royalty that was not only progressive but also people friendly in fact the love and respect that the people still have for their tamburan is not because of history of which he is indeed a character but because of his character that features exemplary memory genuine empathy and above all truly enduring grace may the lord grant our king long life leading a pious life after dedicating everything to lord padmanabha and declaring himself to be padmanabha dasa or servant of the lord continues to be part of our history and thus the dynasty which came into existence in the treta yuga which continued as travancore during the reign of martanda varma and which witnessed the golden age of the multifaceted musical emperor maharaja swati tirunal now has become part of history witness to this tumultuous change uttaradam tirunal martanda varma continues as a humble vassal of shri padmanabha leading a calm and contented life and miles to go before i sleep <laughs>